Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 and today we're in Parkitect. In the last couple of episodes we took a look at Sakura Gardens and Silica Slopes. So today I'd like to take a look at Disaster Peaks. A disaster of an amusement park, unmaintained, unclean and unsafe. That said, the area is too good to pass up and the existing rides aren't bad once fixed. Pull this park out of the gutter and turn it into a gem. Your scenario requirements are have an overall park rating of at least 75%. Please note one of the optionals here is to have an experiences rating of at least 70% so you'll probably get that on your way to this overall park rating and this will give you an additional coaster I think and a load of money. Have a cleanliness rating of at least 80%. This one's the difficult one here because it says unmaintained, unclean and unsafe and this place is a mess. So this is your difficult one. This is the one that made me struggle and made me miss out on my second gold medal. Have at least 750 guests in your park and have no loan debts. This doesn't mean you can't take loans but it does mean you have to pay them off before you complete the scenario. And of course the final optional goal for the second medal which I didn't get is complete all non-optional goals by the end of January year three. So let's take a look at the park that I built for this scenario. When you start this park you'll find you've got a huge area to work with. There are a couple of downsides. You've got this huge lake in the centre with a big long path that circles all the way around it. You've also got, at the start, a huge railway that circles the entire park and has three stations on it. And you start with three coasters, all of which need fixing, maintaining. And don't forget to look at the statistics page because you'll find that all the money that the coasters make will go directly back into looking after the coasters so that you won't make any money from them unless you shut them down and adjust the, the ratings before you start. The path when you start is completely full of trash. The garbage has been dropped absolutely everywhere and all the lights, all the bins, all the chairs have all been smashed to pieces. So you need immediately to get lots of janitors and mechanics on the job or of course you can spend a lot of money repairing all the vandalised fixtures and fittings but of course you can't pick up all the trash. You would have to delete all of the paths in order to clear all of that which is a big job so just get some janitors on the job. Your also your second option of course would be to delete the entirety of the transport railway and then put brakes in the path or signs to stop people going along a long section of the path so you could cut off the entire opposite side of the lake over here to reduce the amount of space that you need to clean up and work with but of course a it would give you a smaller amount of park to work with and b you lose the transport and because this is where the entrance way is and the three coasters that you start with are all the way on the opposite side of the lake over here You've got these two dueling coasters, the red and purple here. And you can see them, they start here. They head out in this direction to the very edge of the park, in this little offshoot of your park. Zip back along here, twist up over the station, interact with both the path and the railway along this side of the river, go across the lake, circle back round, and head into the station there. So it's a really nice design, but it's got a very low throughput because there's only one train on each of them. So I found that although it looks very impressive, this one isn't a big money maker and doesn't have big queues unless you reduce the money uh, paid to get on it. And then of course you have people stuck in the queue for too long because you've only got one train on each track. So that's a little bit of an awkward one actually. It looks really impressive but this is the coaster that makes you more money. So just be aware of that when you're starting out. I decided to keep the railway, which meant I had to keep the whole of this side of the path as well. Um, it does give you more space to build rides on, but it does mean that you've got a huge amount of path to try and get your janitors to clean up. And I think that was the downfall for me not getting the second gold medal. 
because the janitors just couldn't keep on top of the rubbish. Because when the guests come into the park and they see lots of rubbish and damaged things, then they get upset really quickly and they start to throw rubbish on the floor and damage things as well. So it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle until you can finally get on top of it. And that really made it hard for me to finish the scenario. So you could, of course, delete the entirety of this railway and use the money that you get from deleting it to make this side of the park fancy a lot faster uh, and then if you need to you could start opening up further sections later on and then you wouldn't have quite so much trash to clean up and that might make it easier to get your second gold medal but let me show you what I did the entrance way to your park is right here so your guests come in here in this pretty little building and if we go out just a little bit further and let me drop the scenery you can see that this is where the entrance to Disaster Peaks is right here, and then you've got your goods in ve uh, vehicles, your goods in buildings right here. And then right next to that, you've got the train track, the transport train dropping underneath the path. So I think this is a really nice idea, and it's something I've not used in any of my parks, but it's a really great idea for getting the interaction between the two and helping them to pass over each other. And then just across, passing past this train track, I've added a toilet block. Uh, with a couple of toilets in here and a staff room just on the edge here um, because there isn't really space to build it next to here because of the train track interaction. You could put it over here but I didn't really want to put it right next to the path as you first come in. I wanted to kind of get people in the park so they can see a few rides before they see any of the utility buildings. And then I've used the little area right next to this little square with the fountain uh, to build a little food court. As I say, when you first start thinking about what you should research, I recommend you start with shops because the scenario basically comes with a vending machine. And uh, really, a vending machine isn't very good for making people happy, so you really need to get at least one drinks building and one burger building otherwise you have people who are not going to be terribly happy about things <laughs> so inside this little food court I got cotton candy hot drinks and burgers and of course we've just got the vending machine just right outside of it and so I've got the basic amount of food stuff so I researched those first until I got enough of that and then I went on to thrill rides um, because although you've got this huge amount of water and it could be very tempting to go for water rides, thrill rides are going to bring more people into your park than the water rides are. So I focused on the thrill rides. So in the end, I haven't really utilised the lake for the water rides. So as you come into the park, you filtered into this little section of uh, a square over here past the toilet building and I've used different types of building materials to give a bit of a contrast to the buildings in the park so it's a bit of an eclectic park because we've got like castle type walls around the staff room we've got red brick for the toilet block and we've got this kind of pink cotton candy roof to go with the cotton candy snow cones machine room <laughs> and then I've used lots of pretty flowers all the way around to give it some atmosphere to make it look pretty to make people's happiness ratings go up and even now you can see the uh, cleaners are not having a good job of keeping on top of the trash like all the bins are full and I have one two three four five six seven eight eight janitors and they're still not keeping on top of the bins so a bit of micromanagement on your janitors is probably a good idea in this park because, as I said, this was the thing, the dirty paths was one of the big things keeping me from completing this scenario. So right next to the entranceway, I've got my carousel, the standard staple of every theme park in the entire world. Right next to that, we've got a wipeout right next to the food court. And an inverted double swing all packed into that little area right next to the food court and then right next to that we have the pirate ship the swinging ship and I've put that on the water right next to this wooden walkway that leads you across to the next section of the park 
But before we go to the next section, I'd just like to point out that on the water, I have actually utilised some of the water space. We've got ourselves a little log flume. It's quite a simple one. It's just a one drop special with a little bit of a scenic twist at the end. Um, we could have added a little bit more scenery around this one. Um, but it seems to be working quite well. It's pretty full. It's only one empty boat. Look, we're doing quite well with that. Let, and if we follow the path around, the path has got lots of interaction with the water so it can see the beautiful water which kind of adds to the scenery to people. And then right next to this we have the train station. So it's the first train station. This is the one closest to the entryway to the park. There are, <coughs> there are three different stations on the railway as we go around the park. So this is the closest one to the entrance. And right next to that we have the Ferris wheel and the jumper. And that is all of the rides on this little bit of the land area. So if I zoom out and show you that section, there's the train coming through, look. It's a beautiful old steam train style. So we do have a little bit more space. We could have added an extra ride there. So space is not going to be a deciding factor on this park. As I said, the maintenance is. And then here's the entranceway. And this is the little cluster of rides right here to get everybody really into the park and into the theme of the park itself. And I've got lots and lots of seating areas all the way around the park. There's this beautiful pier building in the centre of the lake which you probably could incorporate and use as something but it's going to be quite a lot of effort to actually incorporate that into the park itself as a utilisable building. I think it's too small to actually use as a food court because you can't run the pipes to it for the chutes so that would make it a little bit awkward because the guests don't like to see your janitors transporting things. So if you go past the swinging ship across this big wooden bridge you come to the second station for the railway. Right next to that we've got a teacups, we've got another toilet right next to this as well and we've got that big coaster which I think is the the most money making one in the park, the Hurricane. It uh, gets people through quite quickly and as you can see it's got a really long queue and people are really happy to be on this one and the park did come with this one. And if we continue to follow the path around, we come to the dueling coaster. As I say, it's a lovely layout, but it would really need some block brakes added to it to get more trains on. That would make it into a money maker. Got another toilet just around here next to the swan boats. And you can see a few of the swan boats underneath the coaster so that's actually a nice way to interact the two rides the swan boats get to pass underneath the coaster so they've got some nice scenery to be viewing as they're traveling and then if we keep following the path underneath the coaster we've got lovely path interactions there with both the land train and the coaster with this path and then i've added the bumper boats along here as well and they're quite a distance from the swan boat so they've got plenty of space to spread out and not bump into each other and you've still got lots of space that you could build other water rides if you wanted to. As I said I didn't research those. So if you keep following the path around we come to the third and final station for the train. Just behind it I've tucked in the, um, I've clicked a person, it's the magic carpet ride. which is kind of a medium intensity, a low to medium intensity ride I would class that one as. And it's got a path underneath the train station to get to access to the magic carpet. So it's, I've built that on as an offshoot of the exit from the station. And there's the magic carpet in action. None of them are throwing their hands up in the air. It's probably because it's raining, it's kind of dampened their enthusiasm. And we've got the, oh, we keep clicking the people, the Tourbillon. This is one of those crazy rides that flips you over and over in three different directions all at once. A little bit more intense than I would a uh, ride I would probably get on in real life, but uh, it's a very popular ride in the park, as you can see from the number of people getting on and off it. And all the rides are now going to be closed because of the rain. Next to that, we've got the G-Lock. Again, a very 
popular ride for the people who like uh, a little bit more intensity in the rides and again that's got great interaction with the land train uh, it's quite a cute train that isn't it and then the path keeps going see how long this path is it's absolutely mental how long this path is and then you've got the star shape right next to this you can see all the lighting now because of the rain so it looks quite pretty along this side of the lake and of course you can see across the lake from the opposite side that would be a great skyline and here I've added another steel coaster at the back of the park uh, it's quite an intense little ride as well in this area uh, really steep paths to be able to fit that into the train because it kind of rises up at the edge of the park but I think that's a nice addition and that should get going again now that the rain has stopped and next to that we've got the wave swinger and that is all of the rides that I popped in my park and if you look at this one it's still got quite a lot of space actually I could have packed things a lot closer together and it's got quite a lot of space here you could have added another coaster here and maybe another one here or another section of rides could probably fit in a few more over here or maybe another coaster depending on what else you might want to build in your park this one because of the space you could add a lot of water rides and things as well this one would actually probably be a good one to pick for building in the freeform building stage to build a park a more permanent park for yourself so that's the park that I built for Disaster Peaks and as I said the biggest problem I had was keeping all the paths and things clean because there's such a long area of path available that it makes it hard for your staff even if you've got lots of them to keep it nice and clean so I think that's the determining factor for getting this scenario completed. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. From Softkitty99 goodbye and happy. Happy gaming!